Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The campaign is Horror on the Orient Express, and it's available from Chaoskin. I'm the Keeper of the Secrets, and this is episode 41. Our recap will be given by Morgan Llewellyn as his character, Dr. Neruda. So, without any further delay, let's continue our journey into the darkness. Morgan? Thanks, Tom. Much thought has gone towards the contemplation of flesh. From those considering the body as vessels of corruption, impurity, pain, and gross vile impulses, imperfect housings for a dualistic soul, to others that view the body, view flesh, as the full extent and all be all of being. It would seem to me that we are beings of flesh who are considerably deceived as to the nature of it, mistaken in our assumption that we have any real control over it at all. Our flesh, our bodies drive us, but can we really separate and abstract it us from our bodies? Even in Dante's dreams about what waits beyond death, the tortures within Inferno and Purgatory are, prefer are performed on bodies, as though the body is the only medium through which we can process or understand experience. Abstract sin punished through torturing a physical, tangible body. It seems that we have stumbled once again into something beyond our comprehension. Bystanders in a conflict between two obscure cults, which share some, which share some common threads in the mutability of flesh. I am reaching the point where I cannot bear to look at my own skin. What secrets does it keep from me? To what unknowable forces does it answer to? God, how my right leg aches. I thought there was something peculiar about Tremona's arm. And everything is all confused in my mind now. Let's see. We had our luggage sent ahead to Postumia. Well, we arranged for the procurement of a motor car in order to hide our movements from the cultists awaiting us at the train station. This... Precaution, however, proved a little use. Once we took the tour train down into the sunless steps, we were ambushed. Tremona and his fellow worshippers of the late Ligor were waiting for us down there. They demanded that we hand over the amulet. When they had Roland in their dark clutches, they, in turn, were ambushed by Brothers of the Skin. Madness and death soon filled that cave. Flesh answering all sorts of blasphemous calls, betraying those that wore it and thought that it belonged to them. Tendrils flailed and knives flashed. Flesh warped and crawled and changed. It seemed that the Brotherhood of Skin knew that the Ligor cave likely held a piece of the simulacrum like we did. And they likely had been assuming that we were part of, or otherwise connected to, this Ligor cult when they were stalking us back in Trieste. In any event, we escaped down a side tunnel away from the main cave. Several innocents who were with us fled off into the dark labyrinths of Earth's bowels, likely never to be seen again. Our path brought us to a lake. And here my memory floods with anguish. Those still waters concealed the bleakest pits of nihilism. Why go on? Better to die here than to continue the futile torment we call life. Our spectral friend's despair seems born from this place, not from any simulacra piece as we had once suspected. Fortunately for us all, Roland managed to keep calm. He galvanized those of us who had capitulated to the lake. He even had to go so far as to prevent poor Theodore from taking his own life. After stumbling around that damnable place in a malaise, I found the right leg of the simulacrum. Now my own leg disobeys me. Its flesh heeds another voice. Some foul impulse has now awakened the, the independence that was lurking always in my sinews. I recall terrible tremors and fleeing upwards out of the dark and back to the surface. The air chill and the sunlight most welcome. Gunther 
had the prescience of mind to disable the other vehicles parked there, and we can and we covered our our movements by taking by backtracking our way to Trieste and boarding the express there. Now that the cultists were somewhere deep below us, dying and killing in the dark. Excellent. All right. So you've you've boarded the train. You are a little hungry, exhausted, um, mentally tired, um, but you, you're going to stay up at least until you get to Postumia again and make sure that all of your, your things are carefully loaded back on the train. And that's pretty much what happens. Um, it's around 11 o'clock when you leave Postumia, and uh, the uh, adrenaline is still pretty high in your, uh, in your bodies. Um, and you're still, you're still hungry. You're, you're probably wanting to drink and everything else. What do you do? Well, like you implied, I'm going to order me a, uh, a vermouth to uh, sip on. Okay. Uh, you know that it's going to be a long trip to Belgrade. You are now going into the kingdom of the Serbs, the Croats, and the Slovenes, which I believe just recently... Uh, got renamed to Yugoslavia, but uh, the name hasn't caught on. Right. So, so from uh, Smythe's notes here, uh, when, once we make it to Belgrade, we need to go by the uh, National Museum and I know I'm going to butcher this name, speak to Dr. Malovan Todorovic. He's the uh, curator of the museum. Hopefully, he is a <laughs> living contact of yeah. Mr. Smythe <laughs> and not another entombed one. Yeah. Yes, hope hopefully. Yeah, at, at least here he implies that he's alive since he's the curator, whereas Johan, now that I go back and look at it, just says, look for him in the museum. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very amusing. So as you are um, relaxing, uh, enjoying your meal, um, a gentleman, maybe you've, you've seen him before on the, the, the train. He is the sommelier. Uh, he comes over and uh, Maurice, I mean, maybe you've already talked to him you know a bit mm -hmm. uh, he comes over and he has a bottle of wine in his hand um he says um uh, a gift uh has been sent to you uh oh. by one of the patrons on the uh the train they uh think that uh your youthfulness and exuberance as they put it uh is quite refreshing um <laughs> Uh, and he, uh, he shows you the bottle. He explains that it is a label from the Chateau Griard Lafont, which he doesn't recognize and he knows his wines pretty well, but it is a, uh, it is a, a Sauternes, which is a, an amber colored wine. Uh, and there is a note, uh, written across the front of it that says un samiel de sev which is the uh something along the lines of the uh dreams of the sap mm -hmm. this is this is part of the printed label or is this a note written by his uh, patron it looks like a note that was written on to the the across the label um uh, it's uh, the sommelier explains that he's trying to give you a description, a rather flowery description of the flavor. Um, 
the sap usually referring to the grapevine itself or something like that. Anyways, he says, if you'll permit me, I'll uncork it and uh, pour, if you wish. Oh, of course. To whom do we owe such a generous gift? Well, he told me he wanted to remain oh. anonymous. He. Dang it. Um, <laughs> he, um, he pops the cork and uh, gives it a, a quick sniff and then hands it to you uh, to smell. He says, it has a profound smell. Uh, of course, uh, Maurice, you uh, would join us as a sommelier. You should have the richest experience of various uh, vintage. He says, he says, of course, uh, I'll at least taste it for you. Um, he says, it's part of the reason I love this job, because I get to, to okay. taste things that I've never tasted before. And he has a little silver spoon, you know, around his neck. And he uh, pours out just a little bit of it, and he smells it. He says, uh, it's a very fragrant, um, it's a magnificent smell. He tastes it, uh, and he's, his eyes light up. He says, it's, it's remarkable. It's uh, like nothing I've ever tasted before. Um, uh, deep and, and uh, fragrant, and uh, it evokes um, the fineness of life, he says. Uh, you also notice that some of the other people in the train that are having a late evening meal um, sniff the air and they sort of look back in envy at this, uh, the, the aroma of this, uh, this wine. Can we, can we smell it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Does it, is, is it reminiscent? Because I'm, I'm trying to think of the, uh, Myanmar's, uh We were offered a very, very vintage on another train once, yeah. Yeah, definitely it does remind you maybe of that. Not quite the same, though. Uh, oh, this huh. is more, more musky and more uh, more uh, what you'd expect from a, a earth wine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, well, I mean, I assume I have a glass in front of me that he could pour it in. Oh, he bring, brings glasses. Oh, okay, person. yeah. yeah. Uh, he pours out a little, and as he pours, he says, uh, a perfection. The color is crystal clear, a uh, beautiful amber color. Um, uh, Maurice, from what uh, region does the Sotan generally? What is the terrain of this and so on? Uh, that would be the Grave uh, section of the Bordeaux. Hmm. All right, so you all drink? Yeah, prost. Uh, it has... I'll, I'll it, take a sip. It has a strong, deep, woody sort of flavor. Uh, mm. um, there's layers and layers. It's, it's obviously an old, complex wine. Mm. Yeah, you, this... snatched, you snatched the word right from my lips. I was going to say complex. Does it have a year on the bottle? Oh, uh, there is no year on the bottle. Hmm. Is that does that region include uh, the city of Lausanne? Um, I'm not sure. We made a we had an acquaintance uh, who was very interested in the world of dreams in Lausanne. Oh. Uh, well, uh, he told me that after you taste it, uh, uh, I could uh, I could reveal him. Uh, it's that gentleman there, and he turns around. There's like a corner booth, and there's no one there. And he's like, "Oh, well, he must have uh, he must have exited." Uh, a rather handsome, somewhat rotund gentleman, dark hair. Yes, yes this could be our friend from Lausanne for certain. Well, it tastes good. Oh, takes more. He popped the cork in front of us, so you can you can all do spot I'm, hiddens. I'm assuming at least one of us didn't consume. I am well, not. I probably oh. didn't either. Apparently, I, I ooh, what I, I rolled a I rolled a hundred. So Dorian doesn't like wine, so well, I rolled yeah. an eleven, which is an extreme success. So. Mm. 
a, a, a regular success. With your spot yeah, regular. Hidden, uh, you've been sitting there for the good part of an hour, and you don't recall seeing anyone over there in the corner. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like you would be looking for someone, but you would definitely have noticed if somebody was <laughs> over there. But you don't. Um, you, your food is, is, of course, superb. The wine was good. Um, you feel relaxed and uh, very, very drowsy now that uh, the adrenaline in your blood's dropped down and the exhaustion of the day is setting in. Mm-hmm. All of your stuff is now secured. And uh-huh. you... It's you've got like twenty two hours before you get to yeah. Belgrade. Is there a, a paper, Belgrade paper we could uh, I could grab and retire to my quarters with? Sure, sure. Hmm. Yeah, I'd like to peruse yeah. the papers and uh, maybe head back to my There's also the usual things for the, the, the London Times and the Right. You know, they have a good a good assortment of, of newspapers. I'm gonna go to uh, I assume this is kind of the la- dining car maybe the lounge car or something to uh, sit back and have a cigar okay uh, well you've probably already smoked a cigar everybody oh. sits around um, uh, everybody can do constitution rolls uh, even if we didn't drink the wine yeah Okay. Tired. Seventy six is a failure. Gosh. Ooh. Extreme path. Eleven. I failed. I failed. Okay. So everyone except for Thurst, uh, Thurston or Th- Theodore, uh, you 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 can barely keep your eyes open. Mm-hmm. And it's not it's not just the food and wine. It's the exhaustion. You've been running through caves, and it's it yeah. almost seems like an old dream. You know all that excitement of the day um you're also suffering a bit uh you know maybe with a bit of a headache from the loigor invasion of your brain Mm -hmm. um theodore it's up to you you said you were going to go read for a while yeah i'll just retire to my uh to my bed with the paper and then uh read and then then retire okay you uh you eventually you know, you just get tired. You sit there in the bed and you, you read and you eventually fall asleep. You all fall asleep. And you sleep very soundly. You're, uh, uh, you're, uh, it seems like when your head hits the pillow, you, you drift right off. And the night wears on. The train tracks, you know, make that click, kitty click, kitty click, kitty click, kitty sound. And the rhythmical movement, it's like being rocked. You, re- you recall your time being on uh, Henri's train in the dreamlands mm. and how nice that was. There is a sudden rapping on your door. Um, you wake up. Um, somebody's knocking on your door and you hear a voice outside the door that says, um, uh, gentlemen, you're... Uh, your wake-up call is is here. Uh, we have arrived in Zagreb. Oh, no, my! Wow, oh. left that long. Dear Lord. Well, Zagreb's not the full travel there, Theodore. You know, oh. you if you you guys have watches or whatever, you you notice that it's three ten in the morning. <clears throat> you can see that the train. You can feel that the train has stopped moving. Um. Uh, once again, a knock. Yeah, I get I get up and I open the door. I assume it's you know we're leaving Italy, going it's, into. Uh, it's it's one of it's the night uh, the night watchman for the the you know on the train mm-hmm. who's there the night night conductor, and he says ah um good you're awake uh we have just arrived in Zagreb um. Uh, uh, per your request, I've woken you up. Uh, we've begun unloading your uh, luggage onto well, the we, uh, train station. We did we plan to stop at Zagreb? 
Oh, I have your names here on my list. Oh. You you requested that you stop here. No, no, that's that must be an error. Yeah, that's, no, that's, we did not. All this so you're you're Dr. Neruda and you're Gunter Block? Yes, yes. We have your room number, your your cabin numbers. Hmm. Um and you can see that your stuff is outside on the uh, the platform. No, um, this is... It's quite foggy, so you can see that you know the lights of the platform are halos of, of fog. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh. Everyone, do a spot hidden. Yeah, this is this is an error here. It's a big error. Ooh, I yes, failed. pass. Uh, hard. Barely a barely a pass. Okay. Who passed? I got a hard. Okay. As you're trying to figure out what the heck's going on, yeah. um, you you glance out the window onto the platform where your stuff is, and uh, at first there's just kind of a shape there that you see, but then you realize that there is a man. Um, he's standing in the fog near your things, and he is in a long cloak, cloak, sorry, cloak, um, with the hood pulled up over his head so that it sort of, it hangs down. You can't see any kind of a face. And as he's standing there, you see him sort of reach into his cloak, and he pulls out a skull and holds it in his hand. And there's noise where you are, but you can hear that he is saying something. And what you hear him say is, uh, as he's sort of looking and caressing this skull, uh, he says, uh, here's a cheek keeps her color. Let the wind go whistle, spout rain, we fear thee not. Be hot or cold, all's one with us. And is not he absurd whose fortunes are upon their faces set that fear no other god but wind and wet? And the uh, conductor is saying, well, well, gentlemen, we've we've unloaded your things. Is it time to have them brought back aboard? I think that perhaps this message has been garbled. I and I there are people on the platform I don't recognize. I'm concerned. Yeah, th- this is not right. Let's deal with this immediately. It is, yes, this let is me, not uh, correct. Let me check with the the, the conductor and see. Uh, How uh, long is this station stop, please? Um, usually only a few minutes, uh, but wow. uh, you know, where it's, it's a train, we I'll, I'll get the word. If you'll excuse me, okay. uh, I'm nervous about our bags being out there. So uh, yeah, next, I'll next go, to, so I'll go out there and go. Hey, York, get away from our bags. Okay, I will well, say, I will don't, don't get ahead of, don't get ahead okay. of me. Okay. I, um, I would like to follow the guy who's going to go speak to the attendant because th- this is this is not acceptable. Okay. I'm going um, I was to too tired to change into my nightgown. I still have my long johns on, but I'm pulling on my pants. Do you barely... um do do you point out to the others the man on the platform? Uh, probably not, because I would have thought that they would have seen a. I would have assumed they saw him. Well, I, well, I saw him, so I'm saying. Well, yeah. before you really move, okay. um, the man moves to the edge of the platform so that he's almost right outside the window. And uh, you see him, his other hand, reach up tap on the window and you hear him say what ho gabriel and gunter a bed so early and you too roland theodore and dorian dabrowski sluggards you are did you plan to slumber like swine and forego one of europe's greatest cities hurry onwards to your gathering task uh bah Come, come, I've arranged your stay here. Time flows swiftly, and we have much to talk about ere dawn. Perchance you will permit me to tell you the strange history of the Sedevkar Simulacrum in full. 
and of what you can expect to find on your arrival in Constantinople. Ha, good fellows, let the, uh, follow me uh, and let the devil steer the course. And as he says this, he sort of walks backwards into the fog. Could this oh, possibly uh, have been Smythe in disguise? I I would the the, the Elizabethan Shakespearean language is I don't expect Sug to hear that from su suggest someone who perhaps has been alive for a longer period of time. Do you do you want to do a um oh call it a intelligence? Or is it a no? Is it well um, yeah, I mean, knowledge, knowledge. That would be make more sense, yeah. Yeah, I got a 50, which is a regular success. The um, You're familiar with at least that first thing that he said about, you know, the wind and, and wet. Um, that is from the Revengers tragedy, the third act by uh, Cyril Tournier. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Hmm. What do you guys want to do now? Well, I'm I'm still nervous about our bags. After all, my uh, torso uh, is out. I'm assuming my torso is out there, so I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, my snuggle torso. So I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to go to the platform. I don't want my bags sitting out there while we. Yeah, I am too. Okay, so the two of you step out there into the fog. It's it's quite yes. thick, but you can you can see bits the lights in the city. Um, uh, Zagreb is a city of towers, um, old medieval towers. You can hear noises of um, you know, distant, uh, uh, I don't know, like uh, bell-like sounds of, you know, there's belfries and there's churches and all of that. There's a slight, there's a, a very slight breeze, but uh, the fog is kind of covering everything, and it looks very surreal where you are. I assume it's warmer than uh, Trieste was? Oh, yeah, it's a little bit. It's still winter. So, yeah. so still got my coat. <laughs> so, Dabrowski and uh, Gunter, you are on the the dock. What about the other three? Uh, theater, you were going to go with uh, Conductor? Yeah, I wanted to make sure that we were going to get our luggage put back on. But after hearing what I heard, what that gentleman said to us, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I, I, I'm sort of thinking this is probably where we need to go. So I'm not so much in a hurry to get loaded back up. I will go out onto the platform as well, just to stay with the luggage. This, right. uh, I guess it's Roland and I are on the train still. Yes. This is most peculiar turn of events. Yeah, it's uh, suspicious to say the very least. However, what with the drugged wine and this ability to change the orders of the train, if this individual wanted to have taken the pieces from us, he could have let us sleep. It's true. Uh, That's what so I was... Should... Yeah, we must tell the porter that we're getting off at Zagreb after all, but to await further orders. I can't find my right boot, though. After a few moments, the porter does come back, and uh, he says, well, I, I, I'm sorry if there was a mix-up, but uh, everything seen here seems to indicate that you requested this. Yes, it yeah. seems that in our fog, we, we must have forgotten. Um, so you're going to get off after all? Yes, yeah, sorry, long travels, lots of stops. It's easy to get mixed up in these things. Thank you for your sharp service and uh, waking us up. We would have slept through our stop otherwise. Indeed. So he assists you in whatever else you need uh, to get off the train. And um, you find yourselves on the platform in the fog. Hmm. Well, I mean, I'm going to look around, see if uh, 
I see that guy in the cloak, or did he just kind of disappear into the fog? It probably do doesn't a, take to me. So. Do a spot hidden for me. Oh, come on. He's probably holding a shadowed lantern in an alleyway somewhere. No. Oh, I think I think we need to speak his language. Where wilt thou lead us? Speak. We'll go no further. Didn't he rhyme though? <laughs> um, this is Shakespeare, Gunther. Oh. <laughs> Um, off in the distance sounds like he's gotten a bit away from you he says this way gentlemen come uh, 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 do we need to bring the porters we have our things uh, you don't get an answer yeah uh, well, we should we should hail a cab and, and get this stuff loaded up here. You don't see any people around. The nightlife in Zagreb leaves much to be desired. Are there uh, wheeled carts on the platform that we can borrow from the train station? Um, sure, that makes sense. Okay. Otherwise, we need a mule or to stand watch while others follow the mad. Scarlet Pimpernel fellow. Yeah, all right, so help me load this up. Okay. Oh. Mm. Mm. All right. right. And everything so you... is accounted for, yeah? Yeah. We have all our bits and bobs, good. Everything is there. You, uh, you find that the cart moves quite easily. You, you also want... have the option of, you could lock it up here on the platform. I mean, he said he had arrangements. What did he say? Well, he's going to tell us about the simulacrum. That's what yeah. is the reason to get off the train, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, well, we do have what's important. Yeah, but if we do can lock it up, I'd much prefer that over pushing a cart through the city. Yeah. Oh, hit. definitely. Yeah, we might hit cobblestones and we might have to be in chase. Maybe we can take out some useful weapons before we lock everything up. Make sure all everything's in order and lock it up. Yep. Quickly. Yep. Okay. Is there adequate uh, storage space for us to rent? There is. Yeah. There's place for your packages where it's it's secure. Excellent. We'll be right there, haunted uh, father of Macbeth. No, father of Hamlet. I Hamlet, yes. Mm. Or at least the ghost claims to be the father of Hamlet. Ah. Uh-huh. So after you're secured, you start walking in that direction. Yes. Mm. The um. The city is wet because of the uh, the fog. Uh, and as you walk into it, um, the streets are narrow. The streets, uh, the buildings are a couple of stories, most of them very medieval sort of uh, architecture. Um, you imagine it might be lovely in the daytime. There's statues and there's, uh, there's things like that. Um, as you walk on, uh, you notice on one street, um, you think you're going in the right direction. There is a young man. He looks like he's maybe probably in his 20s. Um, he's on his hands and knees on the cobblestones, and he's moving around as if he's looking intently for something on the ground. Um, There are a couple of the cobblestones he's actually managed to pry up and uh, and look under. Um, And he's you can hear him saying it must be here. It must be here somewhere. Oh, good, sir. What what are you searching for? May we lend a hand or it's it's my wedding day, and I can't find my ring. It's here somewhere. Uh, 
he then just sort of keeps going, not like he's regarding you much. How is this young fellow dressed? And what sort of speech does he employ? He's speaking normal. Well, he's speaking probably uh, something you can understand, I guess. Um, yeah. Uh, he's dressed in, in modern clothing. So he's not another ghost who's burying things. Right. And uh -huh. he's, uh, seems, uh, quite, uh, frantic looking for something that he, this ring that he's lost. Well, um, good friend is the bride on this important night. Everybody do spot hiddens. Ooh, that's a hard pass. Forty is like, uh, a regular success. Oh eight, which is a regular. If you pass, um, while you're here with this young man, you see just down the street, um, the sort of shape of the cloaked man, um, walking away, because you can see that he's holding the skull in his hand, um. But just as you sort of notice him, you see him turn a corner. I'm going to keep up pursuit. Yeah, same. You're going to keep following? Yeah. Of course, you know, keeping your head on a swivel, you know, make sure. Sure. Uh, so you're going to leave the, uh, leave the man in the street behind? Yeah. I, I might. I'll, I'll, I'll stay and help him a little bit as long as I can still see the rest of everyone. And then when they are nearing being out of sight, I'll leave them and hustle up to catch With up. With the fog, that's going to happen rather quickly. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't want to get separated. I wish him well and be on my way. I'll uh, bend and uh, light one match to see if I get a glint of gold. You don't see anything. And then I will hand him the matches and wish him well. He said today was his wedding day and he lost the ring. Isn't it like three in the morning? And I'm saying this to the group. I'm like, yeah, yes. well, he'll probably be yeah. I, I have a feeling I... things are not quite real here. That or yet, uh, to yeah. put it mildly. Yes. It is a little odd here. Yeah. So you you get to where you saw the cloaked man turn the corner. And as you turn the corner, uh, it's kind of an alley. Um, and just inside the alley on the wall in front of you, there seems to be something nailed with text on it that when you look closer, um, you think that it might be human flesh oh no not these guys again we were always destined to be together from the moment i saw you i loved you so beautiful and cruel so heartless and perfect i your vile servant was not fit to worship at your feet yet i caressed your alabaster limbs i kissed your shining eyes i held you close closer than skull to skin lovely i knew from that first moment of ecstasy that we were doomed to part that you would use me and discard me as a snake escaped its old skin i tried to write down all you were i thought that i thought that way i would remember you i thought i could pin your essence down like a flayed hide and hold you forever in my heart i should have known that any attempt to describe your loveliness was doomed from the start Yet I wrote in a fever of longing, and I drew on your scrolls of skin. I hoped and dreamed that you would always be with me, but now you are gone. All I have left are a hollow hide and words. Empty, useless, tormenting words. Uh, then... When he said... Go ahead. I mean, he said he would tell us a story of the simulacrum. I didn't anticipate uh, it to be in written form. The uh, figure, when he held the skull up, were his hands visible? Um, yeah, you think so. They weren't merely gloves? Um, that's cold. He probably did have on gloves. Yeah, he probably did. 
I wonder if he wrote this on himself. Off in the distance, you hear Perhaps... a laughter. Sounds like the man is, uh, sounds like the same voice. You hear him say, why are you dallying? Why are you waiting? Come quickly, come. The night but, is short. Is it but, perhaps that he is the lingering spirit of the leper who betrayed the knights in the text that we read? Maybe. That the is one possibility. Someone who thought he could possess the simulacrum and was betrayed by it. I'm going to touch the note and see if, like, you know, because of his new flesh, he'll still maybe have some squishiness, for lack of better. Feels a little Scrum. like leather. Okay. Well, I will proceed to follow the voice. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, go to down, you know, uh, through the alley into a courtyards that are foggy with iron railings and uh, um, you can't see the tops of buildings you can only you know the fog obscures everything as you go along um, you go through that courtyard into another street and there are shops along the way all of them closed um, everybody do spot hiddens Pass. Fail. Uh, 95. Hard. <laughs> you notice something catches your eye in a shop. It looks like it is a shop, a uh, carpet shop. And there oh. is uh, there is a large oriental carpet uh, that seems to be heavily embroidered with text. Oh my, look at this. My love is the pure love of a worshiper who adores the idol that he's never seen. Until we meet, I am in torment. I can do nothing but seek you, plot and plan and yearn for that moment when I hold you in my arms. My heart, my body burn for you. My life is yours. You hold it in your white, white hands. To prove my love, I killed a man for you. I took him by surprise. He thought I was his friend. He trusted me, and I butchered him in the night. Yet once was not enough. I killed him a second time. My arms red with blood to the elbows. His shocked eyes held the final betrayal. I wept as I wielded the skinning knife. Still you were obdurate. So I killed him again, and the man I murdered to prove my love was myself. Uh, this shop, it appears to be closed for the night. The door is Correct. locked. Yeah. There are a few lights on. Uh, if only Thursby, you had also had the wine, I would assume that we were all sharing, uh, inhabiting the same dream, as all of this seems so unlogical. Yeah. But I definitely did not drink it, at least so uh, with my recollection, I did not. This is mighty bizarre. Yeah. But we might have not all, we might not all tasted it like me and Thursby didn't, but the aroma was so strong and you never know. Just sniff. Mm. Well, if we, that that rug said they killed him with a knife, right? I mean, not that killing someone with a knife's unique, but Arc Archangelly or killed Winkleman with a knife. Yeah. He, he was his friend and betrayed him. That's where my mind went immediately. Uh, but the last the last word of this disturbing passage is that the man that he killed was himself. The narrative. Whoever is the narrative voice inflicted violence upon themselves. You know, I think we are following some sort of uh, homegrown apostate of the, the the flesh cult. Someone who has his own relationship. Hello, how far are we going? It is late and we were drugged. Keep coming. 
you hear his voice. Uh, let's just keep following him for now. Does the does the city is the city landscape changing as we go? We don't well, know Zagreb, but we can tell if we were entering, say, a dangerous part of town or walking out through the gates into the countryside. Um, you know, you're definitely still in the city. Um, uh, yeah, usually Oriental carpet shops are not in bad neighborhoods. So yeah, if if any of you have uh, something about geography or an interest in maybe knowledge, general knowledge of Europe. Uh, I have history. <laughs> you you could roll history. Yeah. I'll go off <laughs> if knowledge is still an option, I'll go off there because I failed yeah. history but I failed history by six points. So but I pass knowledge. I pass the knowledge wrong. Okay. Well Zagreb is uh, Zagreb is an interesting little uh, city. It's kind of shaped like a uh, a lozenge, if you will. Um, and on one side is a river. Um, I can't remember which one. And uh, the other side also has water canals. There's lots of water canals. Um, so it's got a little bit of that Venice sort of feel. Yes. Um, but yes, outside of it, it's mostly countryside and farms. So you would know if you were leaving the city. And to, 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 to add to that, I mean, occasionally you do cross a little little bridge over a canal you know, with water running in it down below. So on you go, walking in the shadows, following this, uh, this distant voice that you never can quite seem to catch up to. Uh, you enter a churchyard. Uh, you're crossing the, the cobblestone floor, the, the cobblestone road, and you, you suddenly hear a different kind of laugh, laughter, um, a chuckle, um, but it seems to be coming from above you. And we'll do spot hiddens. Barely passed. 90. Zero nine. Man, dice are hot. Hard. <laughs> Gunter, as you look up, there is a large, grotesque um, gargoyle on the church uh, roof overhanging the edge. And when you look up at him, you can see uh, the way his eyes sort of glint uh, in reflected light and uh, his bared teeth, he uh, he chuckles softly to himself as he's watching you. And then he suddenly seems to revert to stone uh, as if he is part of the building itself. I go, Shiza! I could have swore that gargoyle up there, its eyes were alive. Ordinarily, I think well, we are being crazy. followed by something. There was something very similar to that at the clock tower. Uh, yep. There's also but something that one near, flew away. There's also something near the uh, the iron gate going around the uh, the churchyard. There's something lying on the floor. It seems to be kind of canvas colored. Uh, it's a little heap of cloth maybe I'll head um, over. like a discarded jacket or coat yes i will head prove on. yeah head on over. it's odd it's it doesn't seem to have any decoration or anything to it um and it's made out of uh, looks almost like heavy canvas you pick it oh. up yeah i'll kick it over with my boot first and then if nothing's attached to it i'll pick it up it is a straight jacket. Oh, my. like from an escaped lunatic. And there is blood all over the back of it, except that the blood is forming words. Oh, dear. Oh, oh God. My. Are, are you okay for, for what is that? Uh, 
Good lord, here we go again. Something very disturbing. Oh my god. I lust, I hunger, I thirst, I rave. I cannot live without you. You are under my skin. You are myself. I had you once. Then I was perfection, killing and reveling and laughing with joy. I lost you and became a brute. Mad with desire for what I have lost. I want to kill myself, but I cannot. My shriveled skin resists the knife thrust. My dead heart cannot be stopped again. I will kill all those pathetic would-be lovers who stand between us. When I seize you at last, I will despoil you, ravish you, consume you. You will be me. I will be perfection and laugh and kill and revel once more. Oh, my. Oh, good. Uh, given that we are among these pathetic would-be lovers, I think we take this as the point where we return to the limbs that we have left behind at the train station, ignore this undead lunatic, and make sure we are the next train on its way to Belgrade. Yes? Mm. Yes, but that still doesn't answer the question as to... Oh, it... <clears throat> There's got to be a reason, really, why we're here. It isn't as intriguing. Is that 4 a.m.? The bell tolls. Yeah, don't ask about that. We need to be... Be careful. <laughs> the bell tolls for. It does. I yeah. hope that. What? I mean, we got off the train as little after three. I mean, has it? I mean. No, it's not the passing of time that alarms me. It's the fact that the fellow announces that he intends to murder us. Yes, but the fact that. Whoever this was, probably it's the one who somehow made it so we got off the train. Yeah, so he can try it again. I, Possibly I, he I, was the wine man, so... I suspect that he was. So what is your point? I, we should keep following him for the next six hours until he picks us off one by one? He has shown us, I think, something of his nature and I want nothing to do with it. No, but uh, we might learn something new. Yes, I'm concerned about the ideas that he can't be killed, however. I, I it, personally, I can be killed. If it... Maybe we just... curious how him. we knew who we were and we, what we exactly. had. Which is much worse than curious. I think if we don't pursue, we will continue to be pursued. So isn't yeah. it worth just... Do you wish to pull off the rotten bandages? Yes, and what the the, cre the creature as well. What, what was this? It seems. Oh, it seems he wants to to give us tidbits of knowledge more. I I dare say we we might want to gather this knowledge, as dangerous as it may be. But we are in a dangerous game. Well, he's playing a game. Yeah. Under the bell, under the sound of the bells, he is playing a game with us. And we should play along. And knowledge is our only weapon here, as we found out not long ago. Bullets and knives sure don't do much. I, I also fear an inability to get back to the train station in this fog. Exactly. Would be different. Yeah, well, the sun will rise if we keep going at this rate. All right, we'll follow him. Hello! Fiend! Body thief! Where are you now? The uh, woman comes sort of stumbling into the square where you are. Um, she's acting odd. She lopes and she lolls and her head twists back and forth. Um, she seems to be gargling with tear-filled tear -filled, tear -filled mirth. I've seen a man ahead, she cries. A man, 
a head. A head? Mm. And she begins to laugh. <laughs> yes. And then she cries. The whole town has gone mad. <laughs> They're all full, full of puns and rhymes. Does she look living? Does she look solid and she she looks like a street person? Um, she's dirty, um, but there's some color to her skin, and she's yeah. solid. We're not, okay. All right. What did you do? Yeah, this whole city seems mad. He- Hello. Which way did the man go? I tried. I tried to speak to him, <laughs> just to see if she was from. So, hello. Are you she, okay? She turns and she looks at you with uh, wide eyes, and uh, she says, "Ask the tide, and name the one you seek by his proper title. She can tell you where to find him." And then she, uh, as she approaches, you can see that she has blood pouring down the side of her mouth. Cast the tide. Uh, boring. Oh, jeez. And speak his full name is what she said. His real proper title. title. Yes. Uh, madam, do you know the proper title of the madman we follow? Or his head? She laughs at you hysterically and then turns and lopes out of the, the square. Huh. This is like one of those fairy tales. tales might might you be missing your straitjacket? We found it just. Well, as she lopes away, something <laughs> falls from her dress or whatever. It looks What's like it? a sheet of paper. I oh. go towards it. <laughs> I will. I will go towards it and pick it. You pick it up, and it is sheet music. Oh, okay. I, I am not going to sing it. I, I was a weak man, yet I dared to raise my eyes to your divinity. I said that I sought you for another. I lied, even to myself, had I got hold of you. I would have caressed you, held you, never let go, you go. I was a weak man. I could never seize you using my own small strength. Yet I longed for you so, but I made a wish. And my wish came true. I saw you on the golden stage, so perfect and beautiful. I should have known that I was too insignificant to succeed. I, the unworthy one, a mere bag of flesh and squirting blood, singing with stolen lungs, yet I dared to dream, O reader, of my record. Remember this, I was a weak man. Oh, okay, this this sounds very familiar. Stolen lungs, yeah. This is the fiend who who stole the lungs from Katarina Cavallaro. This is a very bassy song, though. What was his name? Intelligence roll? (laughs) It's definitely intelligence. I try to remember. Uh, No, I, uh, my brain has... Are you talking about Fat Cheetah? Faccia? Arturo Faccia. Faccia. Did he have a title? Was he, uh, he did, didn't he? He was a person of some note in the... What was his full name? Oh, shit. I got, I got it in it because I did the recap, so... Hang. Arturo. Arturo Faccia. Yeah. It seems we are going on a journey uh, through what we have already faced along our path. We are revisiting the past, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, In rhymes and uh, riddles uh, and songs. Were the other clues referring to someone besides Arturo? Like, sorry, I can't quite remember. Like, the other. Like the thing written on the skin, it was talking about stabbing someone, right? And then uh, the, what the thing on the oriental rug? What was it talking about? I'm just trying to see if maybe it's referring to some of the other 
incidents we've had. Yeah, that's, that's what I think. I think it is. The Oriental Rug was Black the Hawk one who killed, killed himself last. Killed himself. The one before that, I believe, was the one that felt he possessed the body but had it taken away, which made us wonder if it was not the leper. Mm -hmm. right, Arturo yeah. Faccia, I do not believe, had an official title. I think a clue is and further who down is the tide way. that we ask? Yeah. Is Sedefkar a title? That was his name. Oh, the, that was the name of the Sedefkar. leper. No, the leper was not Sedefkar. The Sedefkar was the magician who made the simulacrum. Yeah, simulacrum. The the leper went on to be the count, the German viscount. We believe John many Bears, who has yeah. It was. It's almost. It was a pun on leprosy of sorts, or some monstrousness. Yeah. 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 So these I look like you as you guys are sitting there. People, as you guys are sitting there deliberating, um, do a spot hidden. Hey, there we go. Oh, an ah. O one. Yeah, they failed Ooh. me that time. My sixty two is a failure still. So. Dorian got an 01. Oh. <laughs> Dorian, as, you're, as you guys are in that square and you're looking around, you can see there's you know other shops and things like that. There is something in a shop over there that is staring at you. It, is it a cat? Is it a dog? Uh, I uh, try to get a little bit closer, but I make sure that I let the others know that I'm going to wards. Okay. I think as I you, see something over here. As you as you go towards it, I would like you to do a sanity roll. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> the other end of the spectrum, I got an eighty eight. Okay. Do um uh, that's a fail, obviously. That is do a one D four. where's my D four going? Four. Four. Okay. Four. Um, Dorian suddenly cries out, uh, and he does one of those things where you kind of jump a little in the air uh, because you're incredibly frightened or startled by something. Does a little bit of kicks with his feet, you know, <laughs> as he's doing it. Uh, catches all of your attention. And uh, as you look... In the window, there is something a little bit beyond description. A taxidermied animal thing. And there is a note pinned to the window next to it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I loved you once, but now no more. Life hurt too much. I saw a way to kill the pain. I found a path to dreams. My love for you was killed. I love the needle more. The dreamer opened the path to the other world. I tried to sell you, tried to sell what cannot be bought or or sold or raised, but I was tricked, swindled, fooled. Now I am trapped in the dreams I once sought, and they have become my nightmare. Does this... That's the taxidermist. It, yeah, does the uh, face kind of look like... Not particularly, but it's okay. extremely disturbing to look at. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Do, do we take that? sand checks for that? or? Uh, yeah, of course, you kind of got warned because he, Dabrowski, jumped up in the air and freaked out. Uh, I, I took the brunt for you. You can, you can, all, you can all do uh, uh, sanity rolls. And you'll yeah. just, lose, just lose one if you fail. I passed. Oh. <laughs> Edgar Wellington rests in no peace at all. I trust that we are dreaming now. Surely this is not a real thing that we are seeing. How about that? Once you again, from the distance, you hear, Why are you dilly-dallying? The time is short. We have until the break of dawn. Yeah. 
Where Ooh. next? So as we're following, following this voice, I'm trying to think. The young man with the wedding ring. That first note and the rug. What are those referencing? Uh, the young man with the wedding ring wasn't the the victim that the girl saw killed on the streets of Venice. Wasn't he a bridegroom? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And the so, gargoyle. Is this? Are these all things that this thing has killed? That's been following us. On a trip down memory lane, almost. Because Faccio was killed by something. By being Faccio dropped, was crushed some height to, or crushed or something. Smashed. Yeah. Are Are you all moving as you're? Yeah. Discussing. Right. I am. So, yeah. uh, Doctor Neruda, do a spot hidden because you were talking about a specific thing. Oh, seven is a seven. extreme success. Something in the ground kind of changes. It's still cobblestone, but the um, the mortar between the stones seems to have changed. And as as you look down, you realize it's a liquid. It 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 looks like milk. It seems to be seeping from the uh, the spaces in between the cobblestones. Uh, it's all over the street where you're walking, except. There is one stone uh, over a little to the side, but still in the middle of the road. And it seems like all of the milk is flowing towards that. And you can hear a sucking sort of sound coming from that rock. I'll go over to it. Okay. Can, physically, it's almost like the sound of a drain. And it seems like the milk is all being pulled in, perhaps under this rock. You're not sure if the rock is actually firmly cemented in either. I'll, I'll like kick it or like press my, like my foot up against it. You, and like you try press to your foot up it. against it, and you can see that it's quite loose. I'll roll it aside. Um, as you roll it to the side, you see that there um, is a pool, a little pool of, of milk underneath it. And uh, setting in the center of the pool of milk is a gold ring. Hmm. Like a wedding ring. I will cautiously, ready to pull my hand back at any moment reach in for it yeah. it's just a gold wedding ring I think I found the young man's ring oh he was a long way from where it ended up Time and space means anything here. You're not so sure about that. Maybe you haven't gotten as far as you think you have. I I, I look around. Is the young man still here? Do a spot hidden. 93. Call yeah, out. You don't see anything in the, yeah, I'll, in the fog. I'll call out. I'll Go say, uh, uh, we Except. found your ring. You yell that out. Um, after a few moments, you can hear the sound of footsteps on cobblestones. And uh, coming into the fog is the young man. He says, you found it. You found it. Yeah. It's, he comes over it. to you and he takes it and he says, oh, oh, you found it at last. This is my happiest day, my wedding day, and let death be my bride. Mm. He's standing there looking at it like Gollum looking at it. <laughs> <They're throwing laughs> power. What do you want to do? Death be your bride. That's uh, an odd way to, dis dis to describe your lover. 
And he says, uh, well, there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy. And he has a big smile on his face. He looks at you like a child with some toy that he's in love with. Hmm. Well, what is your name, good sir? A name? I know not how to tell thee my name, but other questions answer I can, said Mahith uh, Yoda. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> this figure that we follow with the skull in his hand, the man ahead, do you know what his title is? Ah. Uh, and he starts walking towards uh, one of the alleys nearby. You can see now, as you're sort of there with him, that the river is uh, is just down there. Uh, he says, he that knows great men's secrets. And as he gets to the shore, you can see large chunks of um, spring ice that are moving by in the river and he says and now i go to my bride and he steps onto one of these ice flows and as he does his his weight is a little bit too much and it starts to flow down the river with him on it and sink beneath the waves and with joy in his eyes he uh he disappears under the water uh. I hope it provides him a modicum of peace. Yeah, these people. Uh, well, help. we have we have reached the water. Is this a tidal body? I don't know. It, it would appear to be winter runoff. Yeah. Perhaps he was speaking metaphorically. Do a spot hidden for me. Hmm. Six, 62 is a failure. I could spend one point of luck to pass. No, somebody got it. Theodore got it. Theodore. Once again, you see something rather disturbing. There is a tree that's planted with a fence around it, and there's large purple fruits that seem to be overripe, and they're hanging from it. And there's one that seems in the shadows to be kind of misshapen. And as you look up, you realize that hanging from one of these fruits is a human hand that has been cut off, like about almost the elbow. Oh, dear. Um, it's dripping, and there is, you can see that there is, you think at first scar tissue, but it, it seems to be composed of patches of different colored skin and there is once again text written on it oh my god what is this <laughs> got yet another gruesome clue right here life rips the weak apart with lion teeth and lion claws i was strong i glimpsed you from afar and knew i wanted you knew that you would only give yourself to the strongest of souls. I ripped others' flesh from their bones to rebuild myself. I tore through dreams to find the path to your door. I know that when we meet, you will join with me forever. I am unlike all the other fools who whine that they love you. I am strong, yet you still shun me. You turn your face away. I see only one smooth white shoulder. I would bite the skin from that shoulder. I would tear and devour. This sounds like the Jigsaw Prince. Unhinged. The uh, simulacrum seems to draw uh, only the foulest of nature toward it. Which makes me wonder or, a bit about ourselves. Or it's or it corrupts them. It might take individuals and initially mesmerize them. 
Oh. Oh, it's five already. Passing so quickly now. Time is moving very quickly. Way best close again. Toast for us, I think. <laughs> we press on. So on you press, occasionally catching a glimpse of Shadow, occasionally hearing his voice from afar. Um, uh, there's a garbage can, and you can see that there is a small book lying on top. Um uh, it is completely blank except for a single page. Uh, and look at it. Uh, I loved your shifting shape, my dancing golden dream. I tried to take you for myself. I failed and I fell into the abyss. Now you mock me in the ceaseless wind but never lets me rest. You relish my fate, my cruel golden one, and yet I adore you. I cannot pray for my lips are sealed. I cannot speak for my joy is locked. Oh, give me shelter from the heartless ones to gibber in the frozen wastes. I am he who screams at your window. I am the blizzard driven dead. Yeah, at this point, this guy has totally lost it. I I don't think it, it's... The problem for you, Doris, I don't think it's one... I believe each of these is in reference to a different individual. Hmm. Um, I, I this one place escapes that one. me. Yeah, I couldn't place it either. But going by the pattern, it has to be something. It's got to connect to something. Unless it's referring to something in the future. Something yet to happen could be. So on you go. Uh, mm. We have to get through all of them before the sun rises if we're to learn anything of this. Yeah. Yes, we must keep going. Hope. Yes, keep going. Yeah, time seems to be fluid. It uh, it seems like you spend endless hours walking these cobblestone streets through this city of. Uh, bells and towers you come into a square uh, where you, you you can hear something before you can see it because of the, the fog it sounds like a woman's voice as you approach you see that there is a large statue of the Virgin Mary wow. and chained not chained roped to the base of the statue is a woman she uh she has obviously been tied to it uh she looks disheveled uh she has been left there to starve to death and she yells out hear my crime hear my crime which was to show that my mother's toil is just as great so why cannot my son be the son of god also you can see that she's tied. 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 Oh, yeah. Ask this the is tide. the one who is tied. Last one. What can you tell us if he that knows great men's secrets? Um, she looks up at you. Um, there's no expression in her voice at all. It's it's an empty, broken sort of voice. And she says, He that knows great men's secrets and proves slight that man never lives to see the beard turn white. Uh, he waits for you at the bridge to the great fort in the center of the city. Mm. Is there some way we can appease your suffering, lost one? I am a criminal. 
I wish peace upon you. Which way to the center of the city? That way. She sort of gestures with her head. God be with you. Is that roughly the direction that the voice in the distance is leading us to? Yeah, probably. So, once again, you move forward. And if it's not a nightmare, it feels like a nightmare. Yeah. Um, there's something ahead in the fog, something swirling, something brighter than the fog itself. Um, you can see like little firefly lights or, or something else, but the fog swirls before you. And as it swirls, it begins to form letters. You are ours. We do not care for you. We seek only the gold. We long for it and claw for it in frozen howl. Yet we have you. Water, drop by drop, forms a limestone skin upon you. The millennia unroll while we wait in the dark. Stalagmites form over you like icicles. You are one with the rock. Your loveliness does you no good here. You will stay with us now. You know, the despairing tones of the cavern beneath the caves. Yes. seem to be approaching the end as reaching the end of our memory. Logic would suggest, yeah. So perhaps the one that felt so frozen uh, was the man murdered in the hotel with the cold of the Bora. Mm. He was rather frigid in his afterlife. At any rate, we are moving toward the center where what waits for us and uh, how do we defend ourselves from this Zagreb which cannot be real there's something up ahead of you in the alley on the on the ground it's silvery and it's flopping not very hmm. big as you approach it you realize fish? that it is a fish um we're near the water. It's gasping for air. It's uh, dying there in front of you. And it looks like there's something written on the floor, on the on the ground in frost that says, but do they dream? I trust so. Hmm. If this is reality, it only means that I have gone past the last shred of my sanity. Can the fish be thrown into the water, or is it too yeah. late? Just gonna say. Yeah. You'd have to walk it all the way over there. How far is it? I don't like, know. It's a ways back from where you are now. Hmm. Perhaps there's a, a canal or something yeah. nearby. Do you want to do that? Yes, I would like to spare it. Do a um, do a luck roll. I have not rolled under 70 yet tonight. <laughs> nice. Wow. Yeah. So as you as you sort of pick up the fish, uh, it expands its fins kind of in agony. And as it does, the spines of the fins uh, prick into your hand. As you look down, you see blood on your hand where it pricked. Uh, there's not a lot of blood, but... You can see as the blood sort of drips for a moment off your hand, um, it seems to form a kind of red mist in the air. And it seems to expand and to grow and it moves ahead of you in the fog and forms letters. And there seems to be something dark behind it all. Flash of my flesh skin of my skin i love you with the love that devours all things lives souls worlds time itself when you return with your thousands of years of hatred and power and madness 
you will provide one brief cord in the cacophony that surrounds the throne. So that figure is the thing that made the simulacrum possible. The thing that Sedefkar offered himself to. And as you move to the, uh, you, you come now back to the, the river as you're going forward. And you can see through the fog that there is a huge fortress, um, sort of one of the star-shaped fortresses. And there is a long bridge going across to it. It's surrounded by water. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and as you are wa- walking towards the bridge... As we approach, I want to like do almost a reality check, you know, like pinch myself or, you know, you know, things that people you do. Oh, am I dreaming? You know, like you can feel it. You can feel the cold. You can feel the, uh, yeah. it doesn't feel like a dream. You can smell okay. the, the water. Yeah. None of these things work on the train either. Yeah. True. There are dreams and then there are dreams. More for as you um, as you approach the bridge, just before the bridge, there is a large gold ornate mirror. Um, you can see yourselves in it, and as you are looking, words begin to form on the uh, on the glass. I am the gold golden mirror. I reflect your souls. I do not see love. I see hunger for power. I was not created for your vanity. I am misused except by those who made me. Power is meaningless. Love is meaningless. If you truly loved me, my beauty would consume you. All those who truly love me die for me. You can see across the bridge, the cloaked man is standing there. Is is the bridge crossing a, a moat that has it, water in it? It's or crossing the river. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Is is it so? So the fort that's on the other side mm-hmm. is surrounded by the river. Yes. Okay, I, and this bridge is the only bridge we see crossing it, crossing to it. That is correct. Okay. And the bridge looks to be in in decent, a decent state. Yeah, not it's like a, it's, it's probably... a big, it's a big sturdy bridge. Okay. I think the golden mirror does not see us correctly. Yeah, huh? we are not here for the power of the simulacrum, but to end it. So I do not think this warning is meant for us. Huh. So do you start across the bridge? Suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. touch the mirror as we go by. Just, it's just feel a like a mirror. Okay. Yeah. As you cross the bridge, you get about halfway across it. You see the man with the skull sort of turns. You still can't see any kind of face. Uh, and he says, at last, you finally arrived. Not much time left. You could have made the trip shorter yourself. It seems you wanted it to be a scenic route for us. Follow me. And as he turns towards the towards the fortress, the gates of the fortress seem to just open for him. And he walks towards the fortress and the big uh, portico that's there rises up. And the gates, the, the doors open uh, as he walks inside. And he says, follow me. Okay. Um, once you're inside, you go upstairs, you go across a, uh, a balustrade, um, and you end up winding up a tower that uh, seems to be the highest in the city above everything. And, uh, you know, I suspect this is not in the regular Zagreb. 
but reminds me of a very old tale. Get to the top. Uh, he stops. And uh, he says, uh, How like the mind is this fortress? No? Solid, apparently, and holding stores and sally gates and defensible, but old and cracked, riddled with time, abandoned by some, conquered by the smallest of things. Has what it been do? conquered? Conquered again and again. Time conquers all things. Yes. Uh, we have followed you all this way through your city of night and dream. Perhaps you will show us yourself now. He says, uh, like you, I once clamored for knowledge, all knowledge, and my wish was granted. I can import, I can impart this towards you if you want it. And um, you can tell by the sound of his voice that he's almost eager. He says, uh, and uh, if you take it, it will, it will be yours to keep and to safeguard. And I, I will be, I, I will be, you see, my friends, it's the only, it's only fair to warn you. You have noted the silent white partner that I carry with me so fondly. And he shows you the skull and he says, uh, it is my own skull. I could not contain all of the knowledge in my own head. Uh, there was not enough room. I uh, had to remove it. So, if you wish, sit down comfortably, and I shall tell you everything that I know, and pass this accursed burden of enlightenment on to you. Do you what if... See? Oh, I don't think... Uh, uh, you who know great men's secrets, if we shared the burden between us, would we be able to keep our little bone shells? I doubt that there would be enough room in all of your heads together. Yeah, I as well. With all that you know, do you think that we require this knowledge to uh, achieve our ends? It is the knowledge of everything. And he reaches up and he throws his foot back. You can all do sanity rolls because yeah. what is there is his skullless head flopping forward, eyes staring at you. Oh, three. 23. 56 out of 56. <laughs> I succeeded with 26. 68. Out of 55. No, it doesn't also, sound like uh, rolling pass. <laughs> uh, uh, failed. <laughs> uh, 1d2 if you succeeded. 1d6 if you failed. Out. One, one point. Yeah. Ooh, I lost two. I <laughs> lost two. One point. This is what I make for all the other rolls. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, Roland, you, you failed. You're the only one that yeah. failed? Yeah. Okay. When, when you see this and you, I mean, you're, you're keeping yourself composed, but as you step back and you're staring at him, you can almost feel the flesh on your head itching uh, like it uh, and, your, and your eyes beginning to bulge. Yeah, I thought maybe it was necessary. Now I think it's time to run. And I start to stagger <laughs> down the stairs. So you're leaving. Uh, uh, he says, wait, I can tell you many things. Every answer I, to every question you've ever... I, I do not need all knowledge. No person needs all knowledge. Such a thing is impossible. Where are the scrolls that we seek? Ah, you have asked. And he begins to talk. Now, who left? Roland, you're, you've moved away. I'm wandering. Um, I'm moving away, yeah. 
The rest of you are still kind of there. Yep. Oh, yeah. I'll even step a little closer. Okay. Well, information, knowledge seems to be coming out of him and into your mind. But it's time to go. It's, <laughs> uh, uh, one, as I say it here, one by one, hideous secrets of existence are bared, naked and jagged or implied. The cataclysmic power of the Cthulhu mythos, the horrible pointlessness of the universe, ghastly prophecies for human uh, humanity's future, and every minute that you listen, you lose one d ten sanity points. Oh, how? So, those of you who are listening, one d one d ten sanity points. You're automatically. Oh uh, no. Uh, I have realized that I've actually oh, been past no. my I've been past my twenty oh. percent threshold for a little while. I've only just I, realized. What did you lose, thirsty? Ten. I rolled ten. You were eager. I lost five. I, I lost five. Do, do but... I have to roll? Because the second the knowledge thing happened, I was out. You get the you get the first first. Uh, and oh seven oh just to clarify i am on 29 sanity altogether ouch all right so the first minute's gone by who wants to stay who wants to go do i roll to what happens do i lose it though you can, just yeah. act. you can just decide whether you want to stay. I'm going to do it until I can, just because of where I am sanity-wise. I'm just going to see if I'll burden myself. If if you stay, yeah. another it's, 1d10. Oh, yeah. I'm, I am... I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I, I, su I succeeded. So I use my common sense and leave before I go mad. Okay. Does it, does it feel like I'm finding out where the scrolls are? Is it just like there's nothing a void and there's these horrible things in the center of the universe? Just You're that not I, quite sure. Yeah. yeah I get you're, it. you're screamingly overwhelmed by what he said yeah. to you. I probably uh, kind of uh, stagger back, uh, maybe fall and just start scooting away from him. <laughs> um, so, Dr. Ro Dr. Kurz, Dr. Neruda, you've caught up to him. Um, Gunter, you're backing away. Theodore? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm running like mad. Dorian? Yeah, I, uh, I ran away. <laughs> Before you took another hit? Yeah. Okay. So, you can hear a sound in the distance other than the bell. It's the, it's the, the whistle on the Orient Express. Um, you are making a mad dash, trying to find your way back through the city for the fragile memory of the way back to the station. Everyone make an intelligence roll. Oh, <gasps> 46 and a half. Extreme. Extreme. <laughs> Regular. But it is my first success. I failed by a few points. You fail? Anybody else fail? Yeah. Okay. Dorian, you fall a little bit behind as the others are running. Um, three bells have rung. Uh... Everybody do strength rolls. First, we grab the pole. Woo, 51 is a success. 26. Hard, hard success. Uh, I rolled a 70, but I don't know what my strength is. Nine. Oh, my strength is 50. 94 out of 60. Mm -hmm. I only, I, literally, I have like 30 luck as well, so I can't even do anything anymore. <laughs> if no, you fail, you're going speed. to fall a little behind. We're losing them. I'm even more behind. Okay, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for Dorian, my friend. I, I'm no, not. No, gonna... I. You should keep running. No, Dorian's back there. I'm not. Then you'll both be lost. You'll both no, be lost. I, I, I Dorian, keep let... going. Keep going. 
Okay. This is not the grab. We can spend the night in the real place, but help the others. Lost, for, let me help you up. For oh. the energy that you are expending, make a constitution. Oh, God. My gosh. <laughs> 22 is a hard success. Regular by my teeth. Fail. 10 at extreme. Okay. If you fail, once again, you fall a little behind. Oh, God. You're with me now, Gunter. You're with me. I shouldn't Five have drank, I shouldn't have drank so much. <laughs> We're now next to each other because we fell. Oh. And for sure-footedness, roll a dexterity. Oh, my oh, God. Shit. 66. I will spend six oh. minutes on Ooh. Right. 95. It. Yes. Bill. Oh my god. My Gunter, we <laughs> will disappear together. <laughs> As you are running towards the train station, which you can see not too far up ahead, you can see that the sky is beginning to break. And dawn is beginning to arrive. Um. But some of you have fallen behind. I'm going to try to reach the engineer and tell them that my friends are just behind us. Well, as you are running towards the train, the train begins to move. No, hold up. Wait. So I'm trying to jump onto the train. (laughs) Some of you are there. Uh, Our things have not been loaded. If this is even the grab. Actually, your things are not on the the platform. They're they're in the... We put them in the storage unit, remember? I think. So we locked them on the the platform, I believe. This place isn't real. I'm getting on this train. (laughs) Neruda jumps onto the... (laughs) Make Make a chain. I'll try to catch Neruda and reach back for Thursby. Okay. Those be are stronger. Get the Browski. The Browski get blocked. Browski. And uh, we, we, we're probably just getting. <laughs> I would like Doctor Naruto to do a luck roll. Thank God it's not me doing a luck roll. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty-nine is a success. Okay. Nice. Theodore, do a luck roll. Do a luck roll. All right. One second. Oh, geez, that was close. 67 is a success. Okay. And Roland, that was correct, right? It was it was Neruda, Theodore, and, and Roland. I think it was actually Neruda, Roland, and Thursby, but let's see. 51. Oh, skin of teeth. Okay. So the three of you pull yourselves onto the, the train. Uh, Gunter and Dabrowski... Um, you're still stumbling towards it, your, your bad leg and so forth. And, uh, seven hits. Um, back to you in a moment. Gentlemen, you are on the train. The train is beginning to move, uh, and pick up speed. What do you want to do? If we reach the conductor, we can stop the train. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Trying to get to the authorities on the train to stop. You start. You start looking around the train, and you can't find any, any no. webby on the train. Because it's still a dream. Naruda, I'm going to smack you in the face very hard, and then you smack me in the face very hard. Yeah. Uh, sure. Ah. <laughs> Nothing. I, I rush okay. to our rooms to see okay. if any of our stuff is there. Theodore, you will open up your room door. When you do, I'd like you to do a sanity roll. Oh, no. Do I see myself? Do you see yourself lying in the bed <laughs> oh, asleep? I was... Oh, Jesus. Um, no. uh, it, it frightens you. How did you? Did you pass? I passed. Yeah, just zero, zero points of sanity. Um, You, in fact, all see yourselves lying in your own bed. Um, But 
something seems wrong. Uh, these things that are in the bed almost seem inhuman, and you feel the train sort of lurch. And when it does, it's like you are waking up from a nightmare. You are in your beds, and you you wake up, you realize the train's moving. Um, uh, the whole thing seems like like you're 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 wake, waking up from a, a horrible horrible dream. And just as you wake up, there is a clamor outside your cabin your doors suddenly fly open and coming into your room is yourselves and you are horrified to see yourselves lying in your bed while you're horrified to see yourselves standing in the doorway and suddenly you wake up again and you're in your bed the train's moving and uh, it's one of those like having a nightmare within a nightmare. What do you guys do? I get up. I share a room with Gunther, do I not? Do you? Okay. Gunther is in his bed snoring away. I try to wake him up. He won't wake up. Yeah, I will knock on the Neruda Bloch door. I, I I don't remember who's in what, who's sharing what birth. I, I, I don't. I thought I was with either Gunther or Dorian. You can say whatever you want because it's you a different, are with me. Getting on it. Oh, I oh, I was with Dorian, and I can't wake Dorian. Up. Anyways, you find Dorian and you find Gunther, and they are sound asleep, snoring away, and you can't wake them up. And what hour is it now that we are in our bodies on the train? Because we should not have been in Zagreb for four hours. Is it 3.15 or is it 7 in the morning? Well, as you are trying to figure out what's going on, the night conductor uh, comes walking down the hall and he says, Oh, good gentleman, you're awake. Um, I was just about to wake you up. Um, oh, it's... not for Zagreb. It's 310. Yes, it's a grab. Uh, we're about to stop there and uh, we will uh, unload your stuff. You asked to be uh, let off in the grab, correct? Um, one moment we have to discuss. There were some changes of plans. We will uh, follow you down the hallway. Uh, uh, Neruda Thursby, do we have to get off here to wake them up? Or should we carry on as planned and stay away from this cursed city? Uh, because maybe he can do it again. He, we did never plan to stay here. The one who knows everything can do it again. I, I, I do not feel safe staying in Zagreb. We, sir, there's been a mix-up, sir. We cannot. We have no intentions of getting off at Zagreb. Well, let's yeah. see. Um. Oh, dear. I actually have the wrong room numbers, or the wrong cabin numbers. Um, I am so sorry that... Uh, no, we were awake. We were awake anyway. I think also, though, we'll have a little bit of coffee in the lounge or... Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, yes. Uh, I, uh, absolutely. I'm, I'm extremely... Uh, we usually don't mess things up, but uh, yes, of course. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, no, we will be departing in Belgrade. Um, thank you. And uh, he goes away to do the rest of his duties. So I'll, I'll oh, oh, excuse me. Uh, 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 do, do you have any smelling salts by any chance? Of course. Of course. It's, could, could we get... He goes, uh, goes to the kit and gets the smelling salts. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to bring the smelling salts to uh, to Dorian and see if that hopefully can okay so you you hold that you crack the smelling salts underneath his nose um 
he sort of makes a, a grimace in his sleep, but he does not wake up. Really? Maybe they're better off if we let them sleep it off. He is warm. As we take his pulse, his pulse is normal. Pretty much, yeah. If 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 we open the eye and shine a light in it, is does it dilate regularly? And um, yeah, and you also when you open it up, it's moving around. Uh, so he's the eye, heavily dreaming. Okay. No, I will have one coffee and one God. cognac and go back to bed. How are you feeling, Naruda, so to speak? I, my head aches. I can barely <sighs> stand on this right leg of mine. <sighs> Definitely oh, shaken, that. but not stirred. I was, I was tempted by that thing. And yet it's... the beginning of it felt so jarring that I fled. And I think all the powers to be. Yes, I was. All his knowledge was madness. Can, do, do we, we should... pull out? Oh, yes. do, are we pulling? Are we pulling out any memories from what flooded oh. into our minds? There are flashes. How many points did you lose? I lost seven. Oh, and you gain that much Cthulhu mythos, and you oh, lose geez. that much sanity. That's your. Or you your lose top. that much max. Yeah, that's max your. Sanity. It's your, off your max sanity. Yeah. Oh, so I lose another ten? No, no. Your maximum sanity goes down by ten. Oh, okay. Which it did me. from my from my sand loss. No, That's your sanity your went sanity. down from the sand loss. Your maximum that you could ever have went down by ten. Oh, to I correspond got it. with your gain yes. in Cthulhu mythos because it's got it. Okay, your max Sorry. is like ninety nine minus your Cthulhu mythos skill. Got it. All right. Um... Yeah, nothing you seem to be able to do can wake up Hunter and Dorian. This is so not good. I, I just don't know if we get off if we get off at this upcoming city. If this is going to help, how, them. how we can't we can't? How can we get off and just leave them here sleeping on this train? I think they will wake in the morning. You know, it's only three fifteen now. When seven o'clock comes, the dreamer spell will be over. I, or we have lost I fear, our souls. I fear our Roland is, is right. I don't think there's anything we can do, really. Yeah, I and maybe we shouldn't do. Maybe if we let them dream, they will experience less. Yeah, yeah. Maybe this could just be like a, a drugged experience. I didn't drink the wine, oh. though. Pretty sure. And don't know. No. This is well, that Don't thing we... knew how to do a great many things. I assume that the hand that was injured by the fish has no injury. There's nothing there. No. Oh, very good. So this definitely. Mm. All right. So we're going to leave the story with that, but let me give you some mechanics here. Um, Dorian and Gunter will wake up in 12 hours. Um, they won't feel rested. Uh, and for the next um, 1d10 days, you can roll that, um, you will keep waking up at 310 a.m. Hmm. And you will lose one sanity point every night for that many days. Is that all of us or just Dory then? Just the ones who didn't wake up. And uh, from now on, uh, Dorian and Gunter, you are disturbed and immediately frightened by the sound of bells. Bellophobia. Right. <laughs> Campanophobia? 
maybe. D ring a ding a phobia. <laughs> 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 All right. And that is the end of that episode. Uh, our players included Morgan Llewellyn, David Gassaway, Stuart Lipley, Keith Craig, and Josh Harwood with yours truly as the Keeper of the Secrets. We have a Discord server where you can chat with our other members, you can set up private games, and you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows, and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck, good gaming. Thank you.